Phoenix had just put a rock in her mouth <laughs> as we walked by Why? this like mother. <laughs> she like grabs a rock and is like, no, no, we don't, we're not the people who put rocks in our mouths. <laughs> Sutro Bass with the Leon Trotsky of Burning Man, Mr. John Law himself. Good morning, John. Hey there, Shalico. How are you? Um, th thanks for inviting me for breakfast out to Louis at, uh, at the Sea. It's one of my favorite places. Um, it has the greatest view you could ever hope for. Um, really, it's one of the prim primary amazing spots in the world, really, when you think about it. The Golden Gate Bridge and then this little promontory right here. Um, you know, it's right at the edge of the world, which is where we are. So the first time I came down here, I was a, uh, would have been 17, and I almost drowned at Ocean Beach because I was from Michigan and Tennessee, which is where I lived, and they don't have an ocean there, right? And so I thought you just go swimming. So I went down to Ocean Beach, right south of the Cliff House, and I swam. I was a pretty okay swimmer, you know. I swam out of ways, and I tried to swim back, and I couldn't. I kept going further and further out, and uh, I was in a riptide, which I didn't know what a riptide was. So. You know, I almost, I mean, I went a long ways out, and then I, somehow I guess I caught diagonal to the rip tires, so I got out of it. By the time I hit shore, uh, I was literally lying face down in the water, coughing water out of my lungs and my stomach, and some guys dragged me up onto the shore. For the uninitiated, how would you introduce them to the Suicide Club? San Francisco constantly has this history, long-standing history, of uh, really weird things happening, interesting things sometimes culturally that wouldn't, wouldn't be given birth anywhere else. They happened here. There's an encouragement nationwide to start what was called the free university movement, the free school movement, inspired by the free speech movement. And uh, these schools, which were free, you didn't have to pay to go to them, there was no central clearinghouse. There was no like, you know, like like rule list that you had to, had to hit. So a lot, of, a lot of them were quite different. The suicide club grew out of that free university. And the idea of free university is anybody could do a class. It was free. They didn't have to pay for it. And so con the, there was a very little uh, quality control, let's say. So you could have a really interesting class, you'd learn something intellectually, or you could have clown makeup as a class. You could have taking a walk after going to a movie as a class. You could have anything you want. They did two events that I heard about that had just happened a year before I joined up uh, that were really influential. One of them was uh, where a bunch of them dressed up as uh, in costumes, animals, Keystone cops, weird, weird costumes, and they went to different banks downtown and tried to deposit fish in the bank. And at one, and at one bank, probably I think it was Bank of America. I, don't, I wasn't there. I don't really know. I heard the stories. And uh, the security guard was a real aggro, macho guy. And he got really pissed off. He was like, pushing people and like, trying to arrest people. And Gary Warren was dressed up as a Keystone cop. And he ran up to the security guard, grabbed the guy that he was kind of getting ready to beat up, and started hitting him on the head with the rubber. And he said, get, 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 get. And then the security guard kind of backed off. And Gary, that gave Gary enough time to get everybody out of the bank. OK. It, interesting you know, way to deal with things, right? And uh, so we would just try things, do things, no matter how stupid they might be. And some of them worked out really great. Some of them were blew up, blew right up in our faces. But the Suicide Club came out of the free university movement, which began at UC Berkeley as an outgrowth of the free speech movement in 1964. Some people wanted to, were really interested in why weird groups did the things that they did. So we did what we called infiltrations, where we'd go and stay with some weird group, like the Moonies, which are a weird religious group, or uh, the big, the big ones everybody's heard about, the American Nazi Party. You know, we corresponded with them and went to some barbecues with them, and then ended up going to a rally that they were at. We weren't with them at the rally. They were behind this big screen uh, at a ball diamond, and there were two, there were like five Nazis, and there were like two thousand people yelling at them and throwing shit at them. So uh, that was interesting. So with the Suicide Club, that group, uh, you could do anything as an event that you wanted to, and people would vote with their feet. If they thought you were a dangerous organizer, they might not come. If they thought it was too extreme of an event, they might not come. And the whole range of events going from, I mean, some people did a, a, a hugging club where you just all get together and hug each other. This is the 70s, right? Um, and that was a suicide club event. Okay, that's one end of the spectrum. And the other end of the spectrum would be, um, you know, climbing the Golden Gate Bridge, which we did, or the Bay Bridge.
bridge or, um, or going to try to infiltrate the Nazis. That's pretty extreme, pretty intense, and really disturbing. But you learn something from it. So the idea of the club wasn't to have fun, although we did have fun. The idea of the club was to challenge your, your assumptions, challenge your fears, and that's not always fun. For me, the hardest thing in the Suicide Club, which really busted all the wires in my head, was getting naked on a cable car. For about a week beforehand, I got more and more upset till the night before the event. We all, a lot of us stayed at Nancy Precious House. She did the event. 45 people or so came, maybe 40 people. And uh, right up until we actually took off our rain jackets and our dashikis and whatnot, I was literally, my stomach was tied in knots. I was sweating. It's like I was going to assassinate somebody or something. And then when we did it, you know, the cable car gripman and brakeman just kind of like, they just stopped the cable car. Like, okay, when are you guys going to be done with this so that we can keep going? Like, they didn't say anything. And we're right outside of Chinatown, so there are all these little old Chinese ladies going to work in the morning. It was early in the morning. They're all going to work in the morning. They didn't even look at us. I mean, they're like, whatever. What are the Howleys doing? Who cares? And uh, so, to me, that broke a wire in my head. I'm like, it busted a wire in my head. I'm like, wow, what was I all afraid of? Why was I all afraid of being naked in public? I don't need to be naked in public, but it's like, who cares? Right? No, what's the worst thing that could happen? Like, your balls will get cold, maybe. Or you might get a ticket, you know. But even that didn't happen. Nobody cared. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by that anymore. I mean, I would be embarrassed to do it now, but that's because I'm 60 and a little bit overweight. But when I was uh, 19, no, I mean, I would do that again in a second if I was 19. <laughs> if I was 19 again, I wouldn't wear clothes again at all. <laughs> but hey, you know. Um, Words of wisdom. <laughs> 19 year olds get naked if you feel like it. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Now is the time to be naked. That's the time. Yeah. If, you, if you're looking back on your life, how would he have lived differently? He would have been naked more. So I, I'm a bashful, you know, cons- I don't want to like, bo- I don't want to like bother people. But I, you know, how, that's a little presumptuous on my part, you know? Maybe like, Question your fears. Are they really serving anyone? Is it helping anyone? Test it. Just try it out. If you're right, great. Now you know for sure. Don't do that. I love that like idea and with vlogging, even just walking around and like talking to myself with a camera, there's like a, a nervousness, there's like a fear there. And it's kind of like it's out of it's almost out of like empathy or consideration that you don't want to upset or bother other people, but then when you go and do it, you realize you're like, or when you see people doing weird stuff, you're like, well, you know, what do you do if you see a naked person walking down the street? You kind of like, you do your best to just play it cool and act like, like you don't even notice, right? Or you get out your camera and slightly film them <laughs> biking naked like I did yesterday. Some of the stuff that we did, like the Billboard Liberation Front, which came out of the Suicide Club and ran concurrent with Cacophony, um, you know, we formalized that. I mean, we may, we, were, we may, may have been one of the first groups to formalize altering billboard, going up on a big freeway billboard and making it change the copy to say whatever you want to say. Um, but we weren't the only group doing it. In the 70s, actually, there were a lot of groups doing it in the 70s, or a bunch. Um, and some of them were really funny. The difference with our group, the Billboard Liberation Front, was that we did press releases for the hit that we did, and then we'd hand deliver them to the media. So from the very first billboard that we did in 1977, uh, we got it got an AP on, on uh, Associated Press went all over the world. And I'm like a 19-year-old juvenile delinquent and, and the, the, the sense of like possibilities and the sense of power that that gave me as a, as a young, you know, degenerate like, juvenile delinquent, it was like, Whoa, look what we did. We can do this some more of this, right? So that was a big that was a big thing. And, uh, you know, the idea that you could go up and with like a $5 budget, change a massive million-dollar advertising campaign and get it all over the world. Burning Man came out of all this and Burning Man did not just happened. It came out of a culture that was here for decades and had developed over time and there are dozens of primary people involved in, hundreds of people involved in and it grew out of that. There wasn't any one guy casting his rib on the goddamn desert and there's burning man, believe me. It's absolutely the antithesis to what happened, the exact opposite. So, for your average Joe, if I wanted to find stuff like this,
this, if I was interested in, in participating in this, how, where do you find those trailheads? Where do people look? Where, where, does, the, where does the trained eye go? Well, nothing worth doing is, is ever that easy. So you have to search. There, you can find clues online, although the very best organizations or groups don't really put much information online. You can find little trails, little, uh, you know, little bits and pieces. I would volunteer with groups that do cool things, like uh, a friend of the urban forest, you know, would be a good one. Or because there will be there will be people in those groups that are in more arcane groups that they don't maybe don't talk about. So you want to get you want to you want to completely broaden your social. Uh, landscape by going to a lot of different things. I love Sutro Bass and I've explored here quite a bit but I always like seeing things through other people's eyes so what do you think John will you give us a little tour of uh, Sutro Bass? Sure let's go take a look at Sutro Bass. Summer day in San Francisco. So, oh, we're off trail already. So I was walking around down here with my uh, my 13 year old son at that time. He was probably about eight, and he said, "Papa, let's go over here and roll on the hill." So yeah. <coughs> we're gonna we're roll on the hill. Try this it. out. Whoa! This is oh that man! I'm never I'm never quitting this. That's comfortable, right? I think I I live here now. It's like you're it's like you're laying in a pillow. This is great. Being responsible doesn't mean not having fun. Phoenix, you have to try this. Yeah, no, seriously. I, am I right? I mean, was Sebastian right? Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, this is I gotta get a nice, pretty like, much my favorite now. Catch. I'm already learning new things about Sutra Baths. Lay on the grass. Come on, is that cool or what? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> well, see, normally when an eight-year-old tells an adult to do something like this, the adult goes, no, you can't do that. <laughs> this is really astonishingly we are walking. I thought about it for a second. I'm like, whoa, Sebastian, we probably shouldn't mess up the grand. And I'm like, oh, fuck it, let's do it. Oh, look, this cat does flowers. not give a fuck. Exactly. About us laying Thank on you, this. it will grow back. As a matter of fact, we lay here long enough, it would eat us probably. Yeah, it was true. You know, like Day of the Triffids or something. We yeah. should just watch sunset from right here. <laughs> yeah? Oh, geez, there's a really nice view too. I didn't even like. <laughs> Oh, yes. Part of it. Come on, it doesn't get any better than this. And there you have it. There is our adventure at Sutro Bath. Thanks for coming along. <laughs> if you enjoyed yourself, maybe hit that like button. If you'd like notifications for future videos, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>